So we're going to start talking about electronics and electronic components, because if you want to do anything useful with Arduino, you have to hook stuff to it. And we're going to start with resistors because they're one of the most basic, ubiquitous, and easiest to understand electronic components. Now, this time we're going to go over the types of resistors. In a future lesson, we're going to talk about color code. So you're able to read the value of a resistor in about like two seconds. Resistors are a critical part of just about every type of circuit, even integrated circuits. They're also one of the main characters in Ohm's law. We often take them for granted, but there are many types of resistors, and choosing the right one for your purpose can make the difference between a widget that works or a widget that doesn't work or only works sometimes. Now, complete books have been written on resistors, but in this lesson, I'm just going to talk about the more common types that you're likely to run into and how and when to use them in your circuits. Before we get into that, I just want to say a few words on resistor tolerance and temperature. Now, you likely already know that resistors come in different tolerances. And tolerance simply means the amount of deviation or error from the expected value. For example, if I have a 200 ohm resistor with a 10% tolerance, I can expect the actual resistance to deviate by no more than 20 ohms. The resistance would measure somewhere between 180 to 220 ohms if I grabbed my meter and measured it. So things like heat, humidity, and other factors can also vary the resistance of a given resistor. So be sure to choose the right tolerance for your application. For example, if I'm going to build a circuit that's going to be installed under the hood of my car, where temperatures can vary widely from extremely cold to hot once the engine warms up, I might want to consider using a resistor with a tighter tolerance, perhaps plus or minus 1% instead of 5 or 10%. So just a thought. But anyway, let's get into the types of resistors. We have first the carbon composition resistor, and they're the most common type of resistor you're likely to see and use. They're cheap, they're plentiful, and here's how they're made. Powdered carbon and powdered insulator material are bonded into a compound and used as a resistive material. And by varying the ratio of carbon to insulator, a wide range of values can be created. These are general purpose resistors and can be used anywhere where tight tolerance and temperature stability don't matter much. They're available in power ratings from a quarter to two watts. Next, we have the carbon film resistor. Like the carbon composition resistors in appearance, they're made by depositing a thin film of resistive material onto an insulating substrate. The film is then cut to obtain the desired number of ohms. Carbon film resistors do have a tighter tolerance and a better temperature stability than the carbon composition resistors. They also have less internally generated noise than the carbon composition variety. The downside is that the film resistors in general are unable to handle larger amounts of power because the film is so thin. They sometimes also have parasitic inductance, so keep this in mind for high frequency applications. Or surface mount resistors are film resistors. Now come the metal film resistors. Now these are made by spraying a thin film of metal onto a ceramic substrate, then cutting the film to get the desired number of ohms. And these resistors may have the best tolerance plus minus 1% down to plus minus 0.1%. They also rock a very stable resistance over a wide range of temperatures and generate very little internal noise. Now, metal oxide resistors are constructed by depositing an oxide of metal, such as tin, onto an insulating substrate. These also have an excellent temperature stability. They are also usually more expensive than the resistors we've talked about so far. Now, for applications that draw a lot of power or current, you might need to use a wire round resistor, aka power resistor. These are made by wrapping wire around an insulating core. And they're generally used in applications requiring low resistance values. Because of this, the current and therefore heat and the power dissipated are high. Now, power resistors are common in power supplies and other equipment where lots of power needs to be dissipated. They come in power ratings from one watt to hundreds of watts. Some even have a heat sink so they can handle even more power. They have a lot of parasitic inductance because they are wire wound around something. So they're not good for audio or RF circuits. And they typically have a good tolerance of plus minus 1%. You probably won't be using too many of these with your Arduino projects, though. Now, one you will use a lot in your projects is a variable resistor. The potentiometer, or POT for short, is a three-terminal device whose resistance is varied by turning a dial, or less commonly, moving a slide. They're sometimes used as voltage dividers. 
and miniature versions called trimmers are often found on circuit boards and are used to bias and calibrate circuits. Trimmer pots are not meant for continuous adjustment and could break if adjusted frequently. Potentiometers, or pots, can be linear or nonlinear. For example, the human ear has a logarithmic response. So the volume dial on your radio or receiver is likely a logarithmic nonlinear potentiometer. Now, another less common type of variable resistor is a rheostat. These devices have two terminals with a wiper that slides up and down the length of the resistor to vary the resistance. So the dimmer switch on your wall may be a rheostat. One end of the internal resistance is connected to 120 volts, and the wiper is connected to the lights or vice versa. A potentiometer with one of the two end terminals shorted to the wiper terminal, usually in the middle, can be used as a rheostat. This is one reason rheostats are not very common in electronics. Potentiometers are more versatile. Potentiometers are available with power ratings up to 5 watts. And since rheostats are usually meant for high power applications, they can be found with power ratings up to several tens of watts. Some higher power potentiometers are wire round and are therefore not suitable for audio or RF applications. Let's talk about specialty resistors for a minute because you'll be using these in your projects too. Now, some resistors are sensitive to heat and light and vary their resistance in accordance with temperature or brightness. A thermistor is a type of resistor that varies its resistance with the temperature. So say if I wanted to build a circuit that would turn on a fan in the attic when it reaches a certain temperature, I may use a thermistor. Light-dependent resistors, more commonly known as photocells or electric eyes, vary their resistance with the amount of ambient light. So if I wanted to turn on light automatically when it gets dark, I might use an LDR. So volumes have been written about resistors, the types, their uses, their properties, and more. But this was just a basic introduction. Hopefully now you have a new appreciation and understanding for these basic components. So stay tuned because there's a little bit more we're going to say about resistors. Next time we'll get in some color code. See you then.